page 64, Master Hua was a songwriter and he wrote songs in English and told us to sing them because there's un, uh, unexpected depth in English songs Master Hua wrote. He wrote this song in English. And Lani Bauer, the former Hung Yin, Bhikshuni Hung Yin, the former Bhikshuni Hung Yin, um, put, it, put the melody to it. And Shirfu really valued these songs, and he told us to sing them a lot because there's good stuff in them that you wouldn't, it's not just an ordinary old song, it's there's stuff that, seeds that flower later, you know, so this is one of them. I'm really lucky to study Buddhism because last life I planted good seeds. Now in this life I've met good friends. And a good knowing one to teach me deep wisdom. I think that I will go to Buddhahood real soon. I hope so. My Dharma friends and I together we'll go to perfect enlightenment to perfect enlightenment again I'm really lucky to study last life I planted good seeds now in this life I met good friends and a good knowing one to teach me deep wisdom I think that I will go My Dharma friends and I, together we'll go to perfect enlightenment, to perfect enlightenment. That's interesting, huh? Uh -huh. Okay, flip it over. We have, haven't done this one at Buddha Root Farm yet, although it's, yes? If you can clip the mic on the right-hand side. Oh, okay. This next song is, we got a lot of like 16-year-olds and 16-year-old wannabes here. Not yet 16-year-olds, who will be taking the SAT. And I was thinking, you know, how do you experience the Buddha if you're 16? And uh, especially if you have Chinese parents. <laughs> Well, the word is a lot of suffering. Cool. For example, if you get a B minus in chemistry, uh oh, B minus unacceptable. Okay, what if you leave your iPad on the school bus seat? Oh no, suffering. Right? What if you wear a sweater to school and the same sweater shows up on your enemy and it looks better on her? <laughs> suffering. And then tomorrow's the SAT, and you want the Buddha to give you 800s or the high 70s too, depending on the test. And my parents want Stanford or MIT. Oh my God. <laughs> so, what if your parents force you to take piano, but you really want to play electric guitar? And if you do, if you just strike out on your own, they're going to take the car keys away. <laughs> you don't get to drive anymore. You know. 
Suffering makes the world so mean. The Buddha must have been 16. So. <laughs> an old work song called Rocks and Gravel. I gotta be minus in chemistry suffering. I gotta be minus in chemistry suffering. I gotta be minus in chemistry my folks gonna take my phone from me suffering. That could be an iPhone. When this was written, there weren't iPhones. Well, I left my iPad on the school bus seat. Nobody has iPods anymore except one monk I know. Suffering. <laughs> I left my iPod on, iPad on the school bus seat. Suffering. I left my iPad on the school bus seat. If you find it, send it back to me, suffering. Well, this sweater showed up on my enemy, suffering. The sweater showed up on my enemy, suffering. The sweater showed up on my enemy well it looks better on her than it does on me that's a lot of suffering <laughs> hey buddha tomorrow is the sat hey guan yin bodhisattva won't you listen to me give me eight Hundreds, Buddha, I'll also take the high 70s. My parents want Stanford or MIT. It's a lot of suffering. Well, I want to stop piano and start guitar suffering. I hate my piano lessons and I want to play electric guitar, suffering. Well, I won't stop piano and start guitar. If I do that, I lose my car keys and driving privileges. And I'll probably be grounded and have to go to my room, suffering. Well, suffering makes the world so mean, suffering. Well, suffering makes the world so mean, suffering. Well, suffering makes the world so mean, the Buddha must have been 16, suffering. You, you heard it here for the first and probably the last time. <laughs> Is that question? Are there any songs for wannabe coming up? We'll see if we can find some wannabe thirteen-year-olds. Man, that's not that's not much less suffering. That's just a different kind of suffering. Okay, if everybody would please. Now we recited the Buddha's name and did the verse for opening the sutra this morning, so we'll continue with that. I would like you to please turn to page thirteen. We've got one uh, passage within a passage, passage within the sutra. One, uh, say, start over. There's a, a section within the vows here, within the, the, the prayers, these vows that the Bodhisattva makes. The section is devoted to his person. The word we used was hygiene, but that's an old-fashioned word, meaning your own preparations, like brushing your teeth, like getting dressed, things like that. So the Buddha is tidying, or the Buddha, the Bodhisattva paradigm 
the example, the exemplar in our sutra, is getting ready to do what? To go out with his alms bowl and walk through the world. We get to see what the Bodhisattva thinks, thought by thought, when he's in the bathroom or she's in the bathroom getting ready. Okay, so page 13, it's the first full paragraph as I put on lower garments. All right, we're going to read over to uh, page 14 as I wash my face with water. Okay, now remember as we recite, y use your ears as well as your, your voice. Okay, here we go as I put on lower garments. Ready? As I put on my lower garments, I think, may all living beings be clothed in good roots, complete with shame and remorse. Pause. When straightening my clothes and fastening my belt, I think, may all living beings gather in and bind up their good roots and not let them be scattered or lost. As I put on upper garments, I think, may all living beings get superior good roots and reach the other shore of Dharma. When putting on the Sangati robe, I think, may all living beings advance to the foremost position and get the Dharma that does not waver. As my hand holds the neem branch, that is to say a toothbrush, I think, may all living beings get the profoundly wonderful Dharma and be ultimately pure. When I chew the neem branch, that is to say brush my teeth, I think, may all living beings be peaceful and pure in mind and bite through all afflictions. When I go to the toilet, I think, may all living beings cast out greed, hatred, and stupidity and cleanse themselves of offensive dharmas. When I wash with water, I think, may all living beings quickly reach transcendental dharmas. When I cleanse the body of defilement, I think, may all living beings be pure, regulated, and compliant, and ultimately without stain. As I wash my hands, I think, may all living beings have clean hands to receive and hold tight to the Buddha Dharma. As I wash my face with water, I think, may all living beings have pure Dharma doors and be forever undefiled. Okay, we'll stop there, thank you. Okay, so what has happened? He's meditated, she has meditated. Meditation's over and the day is about to begin and so the Bodhisattva has to get ready to leave the monastery, leave the Aranya. The Aranya is the still and quiet place for cultivation. And now if it's a woman, if it's bhikshunis, they don't go out alone because when this was set up in India, women without a father or a husband or a, a brother or a, a bodyguard was considered fair game. She was available to be attacked and you know kidnapped, basically. Um, it was just the way of, of things in India, and I think China wasn't that different back in the, the days that this was created. And so nuns uh, have, who do they have to depend to, to defend them? It's hard to know, right? So they go out not alone, two, three together. Um, if they go out. And the monks go out every day because that's where the food comes from, right? So this monk is preparing to go out to get alms, A-L-M-S, alms. The L is silent, right? Alms. And what that means is he's going to show up in people's front yard, sometimes at the back door. If he knows them, he might walk right into the kitchen area, you know, and he's going to have his bowl and he's going to be with the other Dharma brothers, the other monastics, and uh, if things work out well, the lay people will be standing there waiting for him. You have a question? Just keep going? You were just stretching? Okay. So, he's, if things are going well, the lay people will have food prepared and they will put a little bit 
in the first bowl, that monk will walk by. They'll put a little bit in the second bowl, that monk will walk by, until they've made offerings to each and every monk in line. Um, this is how the Buddha set it up, and in the Thai tradition, and in the Sri Lankan tradition, but more in the Thai tradition, they still do it this way. They still go for alms. And if you are in Ukiah on a Thursday morning downtown, who will you see walk by? The monks from Abayagiri. They go into Ukiah for alms. How many people have seen them with their bowls in Ukiah? Few people have. It's, it's really something to see because here are these monks like looking like they stepped out of medieval scenery. They, they stepped out of some, you know, sketch of ancient times, but they're real. And they're walking along looking very mellow and chill and, and composed. And if people make offerings to them, they're happy. And if people don't make offerings to them, they're happy. They're just fine. And because they've been doing this for years, the, uh, the local merchants, I think there's a bakery that always has something special waiting for them and puts some bread or cupcakes or you know, biscuits or something in each bowl as they go by. And uh, <laughs> I once was telling Ajahn Pasano, I said, wow, that's just amazing. We have been here 30 years and we've never considered the possibility of coming into Ukiah with, with our bowls, you know. You guys have been here for 10 years and you got it covered. That you're, it's already established. Oh, here come the monks. Let's get our offerings ready, you know. And so Pasano said, well, that's true. But most of the people lined up to make offerings to us come from the city of 10,000 Buddhas. <laughs> he said. <laughs> I was like, okay. So what does that say about our future as alms mendicants? Shirfu said, you know, there will be a time when we'll go back to the Buddha's original intent. He said, probably we'll start inside CTDB, but you know, why not? Now, we're going to have to get bigger bowls <laughs> if we do it. I see how they've done it because uh, I ran into them, or no, they walked by Black Oaks one morning, and then Maggie and I were studying, and she was like, hey, I buy a beer, and monks are walking by. And then I was like, oh, I want to make an offering, so I bought a croissant, and then I ran and chased after them. And what <laughs> happened was that they, after every few blocks, they would have, um, they would dump the food that they have in their bowls mm -hmm. currently into the van. Into a, like a van, or a, like a big basket, yeah. A van, and then they would walk some more blocks, and then that van would go up ahead of them a few blocks, and then park, and then, you know, whatever food they collect in that next set of blocks. Right. So if you offer them a venti soy latte, they have to, like, put that in the, you know, yeah. in the truck before. Yeah, my dad took up the whole bowl, so. Yeah, you know, somebody comes up, some good-hearted person with a bag of apples. Uh. You know, and they, they can't fit it in the bowl. That's it. That's your lunch. Is a bag of you know, no. You have to. You know, you take the stuff back to the monastery. But the idea is there. The principle is still there of putting food in the bowl. Right? So what, I mean, I'm just curious, since I live in Ukraine, what is the appropriate way to offer something to them, and then what do I offer? Okay. Um, if you if it was a, a monk from the Chinese Mahayana tradition, you'd say. Venerable Sir, what's the, right, what's the right thing to offer to you? Our answer would be anything that you care to offer us that doesn't break our precepts. Keys to a BMW, for example, we'd be happy to accept. You know. So, you know, a new Mac laptop would be, you know. So, it's, it's food that, and you know, before this, this could be our, the end of our conversation tonight, just talking on this topic. It's a big, big, big topic. And, the answer to, to Graciela's question is one of the few places where we don't agree with the Theravada. So let me just give you the, the conflict. And it's, it's a, it is a kind of a conflict, but it's, we've actually had prolonged, I won't say arguments, but you know, pretty sharp exchanges between the Theravada monks who say, the Buddha's principle is take whatever is offered. You don't select among offerings. That's not the monk's job. Okay, you take whatever is offered. So we went back and told Sherpa about that and Sherpa said, well, what if they put dog shit in your bowl? 
Do you just quietly take it? You know, he said, that's ridiculous. He said, so you get turned by the laity, huh? He said, your job is to give them wisdom. So of course you have to say, thank you very much. You think that we want meat because it's what you like the best and you want to give the monks the best. That's a good intention. We don't eat meat. What about your killing karma of participating in the slaughtering and the consumption of animals? We do very well on food that has no killing karma in it. Please give us vegetables. You nourish our bodies and your karmic slate is cleaner. It's not the case that we have to eat food that you yourself rarely eat because you can't afford it. Who does that? The Thai laity. The Thai lay people say, oh, we got to give the monks fish sauce because that's the best food. And do you eat fish sauce mm, once a month? How often do you feed the monks? Every day? So the monks, you know, it would be the job of the monks to say, actually, you know, we don't want your offerings to increase cruelty. So why don't you give us food lower on the food chain that nourishes us better and food that you can afford? That would be wonderful. That's a win-win, you know. And we, we say those things and they say, yeah, but the Buddha in the sutra says you're supposed to take without selecting. And we say, well, could it be that at some point the monks like chose for flavorful food and that allowed them to be silent when the lay people put food in the bowl they didn't, they knew wasn't going to be good. And they say, yeah, but the sutras say, we say, well, we have sutras that say, the Buddha is quoting the Buddha saying, any disciple who says that I condone the consumption of meat has ruined his seeds of compassion and is no longer my disciple. You know, the Lankavatara Sutra says that. The Sharangama Sutra says that, you know. So it's like we got sutra, for, sutra facing sutra, you know. The battle of the sutras, Pali versus Sanskrit, you know. And so it's one of those few places. But it's really hard to hear these Theravada monks who say, you know, I was a vegetarian for 10 years before I left home. Now they forced me to be a meat eater, you know. So we talked to Ajahn Sumedho about it, and he said, ha, ha, ha. He said, well, we might really want to do that, but the Thai elders back in Bangkok don't agree. And so we, it's important for us to keep our connection with the tradition back home. So we must obey. And we went, eh, no, it's not. You know, this is Buddhism in America. I didn't say that to Ajahn Sumedho, but you know. So yeah, that sounded like not a very satisfying answer. So it's one of the places, Jayla, where, you know, we don't agree with the Theravada monks, one of the few. And think about it, you know. So like in Thailand, you know, you would get like your meal, you'd get like sticky rice, you'd get some like chili sauce, some fish. Whereas here, like Angela, Spike and I and Tao, we go and so we give them like fruit. And like they said, they have the van that follows. So we give them items that they're not necessarily going to eat that day, but that they can use and prepare later. Yeah. Because they prepare meals every day yeah. at the monastery. Yeah. So, so it's a little bit modified, but... So Drew still actually still does do it, right? You actually do make the offerings, yes. yeah, yeah. So, Jin Chuan. I was going to say, um, when I was in Thailand, I went on their alms round. The monks actually go out at the crack of dawn. So they, so they walk, and you, it's really quite moving, because these lay people are out there at like 6 a.m. in the morning. With the food all cooked. Food all cooked on the street. So this, the first thing they do every day is they're out on the street with their kids making offerings to the monks. At that time, I was a layman, so I was behind holding a basket. You know, so they, they make the offering to the monks, and when the monk's bowl is full, they give it back to the person behind, you know, the lay person behind. And after they finish walking, then in the monastery, they prepare it, and they eat their first meal actually around 9.30, 9.30, 10 a.m. And then that's their meal. For, for in Thailand, in the Ajahn Chah tradition, she actually only, also only eat once a day. So eat that one meal, and that's their, their meal for the day. We also went on alms rounds in White Salmon, Washington, right across the river from Portland. You know, a, a distance from Portland, right on, across the Hood River. And Ajahn Sudanto, from the Thai forest tradition, has set up his monastery there in this little town. And he has a dozen families that he visits on a regular basis. He just goes into their kitchen because they're waiting for him and the food is there and they, you know, 
they happily put the food into each bowl and he speaks Dharma for them or does some chanting if they request it. And uh, we, we were walking in rows, myself and, and uh, Jin Husher wasn't there for that visit, but Jin Chuan was there and Qin Xian, our, our Polish novice, and, and Ajahn Sudanto. And so we're walking by and there's this big burly guy, you know, he's probably about 70 years old, white hair, big, big fella. And he was changing a light bulb on the, on the porch. And uh, we walked by and he looked at us and he went, hey, good day, huh? Like that with his thumb up. And Sudanto says, you bet, you know. And he walked by and he says, I've seen that guy every day for six months. First time he's ever talked to me. It must be you guys, he said. So he says, chances are he'll make an offering next week. He says, that's the way it goes. You break through, you know. So somehow seeing the five of us walk by, we, we had arrived, you know. And this guy who's been kind of ignoring him for six months just finally, good day, huh? You know, a big, big thing. What's that? That's some American accepting the monks. And Sudanto predicted that he'll, he was going to probably make an offering before long. That, that was what, what I happened? I remember what he said was, always loving, never hating. Oh, always loving, never hating. Yeah. And then oh. we walked by, Alex like, says, he's actually never talked to me before. He'd never talked to me, yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing to see the, tra yep. the transformation in that whole town with the yeah. monks walking through. Yeah, having the monks walk through makes a giant difference. So, yeah. Alex, you have a question? I think I may have forgotten. <laughs> okay, okay. You're too young to do that. He's got, he's got, yeah, we'd, we'd probably put you in the bowl, man, you know. <laughs> Lift the lid and he pops up. <laughs> yeah, right. Like Rocky Raccoon. Okay. Yeah. So that's what he's about to do. Let's take a look at the text. What has he done here? He has put his legs down from the meditation bench. He's lifted up his foot to walk. And he's put on his clothes. Lower garments, which you need to go outside. You put on your clothes. You fasten your belt. That's interesting. That they. What's that? Uh, I, I use elastic, but they use uh, a rope. They have a rope. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have, they have higher rope. Yeah, it's and it's a belt. Yeah, and he's okay. Now take a look at the the verse. So each of these four line paragraphs, each of the four line verses, is a situation. So what is it? It's getting dressed. Situation is called getting dressed, and so the second one is away from self to others. May all living beings. This is a chance to practice giving with my mind. This is actually a transference. You know, he's transferring. When you talk about transferring Hui Shang Gong De, this is a transference wish. He says, may all living beings, sends it out to them. And then the contemplation that he's giving is related to the experience. In this case, where it's straightening clothes and fastening the belt, the metaphor is for tying up. So may living beings tie, gather in and bind up their good roots so they don't get lost. Mm -hmm. In other words, may living beings not stop meditating. May they not forget their mantra. May they not, you know, go back to using profanity. May they not continue smoking after making a vow to stop smoking. That would be to let your good roots get scattered and lost, right? So that's the wish. And they all kind of follow that that pattern of <coughs> the situation suggests the contemplation. And he uses it, she uses it as a wish, as a transference. May all living be. Okay? People understand transference so that whenever we transfer merit, it's an opportunity to practice giving dharma. The good roots that he's talking about are what you get by sitting in this room listening to the sutra. Shurfu would say, ooh, if you do it rufa, if you do it according to Dharma, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Dharma protectors invisibly come and rub the crown of your head and give you blessings and make your negativity smaller and make your good roots grow. It's real, you know. And of course, I don't see that, but I take his word for it. And sitting, you know, Doug would remember, sitting in Gold Mountain Monastery, there was a feeling of spiritual presence. It was unmistakable and you couldn't, you know, there was nothing to see, but Shurfu would just let us know that this was not just, quote, empty ritual, right? 
It was a real thing that you're doing. And those are good roots. And what you do with them is you don't keep them. You share them and they go further. They grow. And every time you go away from me to living beings, the self is smaller. You're actually giving away grasping, attachments, desire, seeking, coverings, ignorance itself goes away every time you say, may all living beings fill in the blank, right? So the we too, every time we transfer, may every living being or yan yi tsu gong da or yi tsu yan jing, however we transfer, it's an opportunity for us to add our own tagline. Send out that transference. On Sunday nights at CTDB, I lecture on the 10 transferences chapter and the entire chapter is thousands of creative wishes. Just all the different ways the Bodhisattva says, may all living beings get this stuff and just go to town. May all their darkness go away. May all their joy emerge, you know. So this is, these are transference wishes, the same way. Okay, what else? Upper garments, he wants superior good roots to reach the other shore of Dharma. Sangati robe, okay? The Sangati robe, when you ordain as a monk, you get three kinds of robes. There's a five-piece, seven-piece, and nine-piece, and sometimes that nine-piece is 108 pieces or more. But the Sangati is the big robe. The Theravada monks wear it over their shoulder. They kind of balance it on there. It's a big heavy wool robe. And uh, some of those monks, interestingly enough, I think Sudanto is one of them, don't use sleeping bags. They wrap up in their robes no matter how cold. They use that as their only blanket and live in Canada and stuff, you know. So there's all, all different levels of engagement with the requisites. When I put on the Sangati, I think, may all living beings advance to the foremost position and get the Dharma that does not waver. Okay, good wish. Okay, Neem branch. Anybody know about Neem? Yeah, Neem, yes. Neem is a really bitter tree. It's a tree that has branches that when you bite them, they're super bitter. And the Indians have traditionally back in this time would shred the underside of the branch and rub it as a toothbrush. You know, and it cleans the mouth and it leaves this kind of pleasant, tingling, bitter sensation. So neem, and now uh, Ayurveda has um, synthesized neem and put it in the toothpaste, right? So you can, if you buy the right Ayurveda toothpaste, you get neem flavored toothpaste. We have some at the monastery. I think I used it up. I think it's all gone. I was fantasizing my toothbrush was a neem branch. <laughs> And the Theravada monks call them tooth woods. You have any tooth woods? No, they're all gone. Okay, cut some more. <laughs> I don't have any neem branches. Okay, contact Thailand. Let's get some neem wood. Make tooth woods. When a hand holds the tooth wood, neem branch, I think, may all beings get the profoundly wonderful Dharma and be ultimately pure. Good wish. When I chew the neem branch, i.e. brush my teeth, may all living beings be peaceful and pure in mind and bite through all afflictions. Okay. Now, the next one, two, three, four have to do with going to the bathroom, okay? A necessity every day, and it's an opportunity for mindfulness. Now, there's a cultural, culturally interesting moment here when as you go into the toilet, monks and nuns, there's, you engage with spirits and ghosts. They say that the toilets are very spiritually active places for beings that like that kind of stench. And, According to Shurfu's description, there were lots of beings that are... You see, you know, uh, dung beetles who roll piles of dung and stuff. Well, they're invisible beings too. So you go into the, the bathroom, you snap your fingers to alert them that you're coming in, and you recite, may all beings cast out greed, hatred, and stupidity and cleanse themselves of offensive dharmas. Okay, what's the interesting cultural moment? In India, do they use tooth toilet paper? No. no. What do they use? Water, and their left hand. <laughs> Correct, Amitabha, you know about that. What's that? You got one in your house, yeah. So if you go into an Indian toilet in a proper home, in a very sanitary, beautiful home, you will find water in the toilet. 
and it's for use to wipe. And people who do it, I mean, for people who grew up on toilet paper, you go, what? Don't you get all wet? And what? You, you know? <laughs> and, and for people who are used to water, they say, and you use that paper and you just smear it around? That's not clean. <laughs> How do you ever get clean? You know? So the advocates of the water method say it's cleaner than toilet paper, they say. Plus, it's way, way, way easier on the plumbing. Mm. Right? It does get rusty. Yeah. Okay, now he's got a question. I, I'm going to give you this one, but the next three, I'm going to pass you by. <laughs> so, go ahead, go for uh, it. Is this why we have so many porta bodies so, like, all the spirits can live in the acceptance? <laughs> 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 Very logical. That's logical. Um, if, okay, so the idea would be, if you are dropping your, you know, urine and excrement there, then there are from, I, I don't see this with my eyes, but people who see this say there will be spirits that, that gather around it. So you want to be compassionate to these beings that don't have bodies but have lives? And it can't be, you know, very grand or noble to live in a t pit toilet. <laughs> so you try to reduce their suffering. And the monks go out there and number one, we acknowledge the existence of beings without bodies who might come to that place. Um, and so you kind of address them. And you, first you pray for them. You send out good wishes, hoping to make their suffering less. Okay, then the second one, cleanse the body of defilement, that's for paper users. <laughs> so there are two different verses here. One for when I cleanse with water and when I cleanse the body of defilement. So monks and nuns who are trained in this way recite every time as they, as they perform these necessary functions. Then what do you do? Wash your hands. Lave los manos. You want to wash your hands. I think may all living beings have clean hands to receive and hold of the Buddha Dharma. There you go. Situation, reflection. Right? The reflection is keyed to the situation. What does it do? It keeps the Bodhisattva's mind free of false thinking, anger, dissatisfaction, seeking. If your mind is thinking, may I use this moment, grab this opportunity to benefit others, how can you have thoughts full of affliction? You can't. You can't have these competing thoughts at the same time. So over time, this kind of grooves in your habit and going to the bathroom, like eating, like getting dressed, is an opportunity for spiritual engagement as a giver. You know, this is a moment of generosity, as is every moment. Once you practice mindfulness the way the Avatamsaka Bodhisattva practices it, right? It's a chance to not waste a second that you're not giving, that you're not sharing the goodness. So cultivation is an all-day, everywhere thing. Now, Notice meditation is one part of it, right? This is portable. This is in motion. You're cultivating in motion all the time. All right? So, the last one. Now it's time to wash your face. He's about ready to go out. Wash my face with water. I think may all beings have pure Dharma doors, Dharma methods, and be forever undefiled. Comments or questions on this? Yes, Jerry. Is this how all sanghas target to live by? <laughs> to to have that kind of mindfulness? Target. Yeah, is, it, is this a goal that mm -hmm. is this the ultimate uh, goal or vision that how sanghas live? It's a standard, yeah. Yeah. And from this chapter they took fifty three situations out of the hundred and ten and turned them into mantras that we're teaching every monk or nun who gets ordained. That's part of the 108 day preparation is you, you learn the 53 mantras. So mindfulness is built in. I make a comment. So when, uh, when we were novices in training, you know, I printed them all out and I put them around the monastery. I got permission from the novice master. So from the bathroom, we had to have, just like a, right now we have it from the half camp. That toilet there, 
you know, where we wash our face, where we wash our hands. So what happens is you, when you're doing all those things, you kind of, you can read it and you kind of bring that memory in your mind. And so uh, what's really interesting is if you start doing that regularly, then as you do those actions, it just, you're just by instinct, your thought just kind of goes there because that's just a habit in the mind. And so it's interesting then that your use of the bathroom becomes like an entire, I actually find it's like a, it's like a reset of my system. It is. It's really strange, but you know, we go to the bathroom quite often throughout the day. <laughs> but it's like, oh, if I'm just not being mindful for some reason, and then I go to the bathroom, all of a sudden I'm really mindful again. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I have to be able to do this, I'm to do that. Right. Oh yeah. It brings you right to the action. <laughs> so oh, I'm watching my, oh, okay. You're doing what you're doing, and you're not doing what you're not doing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and so it's kind of. So in the beginning, Jerry, it's, you, you memorize it, and it's like, oh, what am I supposed to say again? <laughs> and then you look, you look for the sign, but, but after a while, you realize it's a state of mind. The words are a guide to a state of mind. So it's not so much what the words are, but how you bring forth this wish in everything that you do. So sometimes you can modify it, like when it's really hot and you're putting something cool in your head, like water, you can modify it, like may all beings be, like always be cool and refreshed. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's not so much that, like, like it's not dogmatic, but it's mm -hmm. trying to tell you what to do with your heart and mind. Yeah. And it's a, it's a wonderful way to keep the xin di, the mind ground, pruned. Keeps your garden tidy. Right? Because you're always responding to the situation with a gift. Okay, there, any of these topics are suitable for discussion as we go, but I wanted to uh, um, give Fab a chance to make an offering to, to this gathering. And he'll, he'll explain. There's some songs... Um, our goosebump songs. When you hear them, you just get a chill, right? And he he turned me on to one recently, and I'll I'll let him describe it. You wanna? Can I bring them? Nope. Just here. Nope. Will we like to sit here? Um, I can sit beside you here. Okay. Is there enough? So in continuing with the text, when I play a guitar, I think, may all living beings realize that all living beings are in this guitar, mm -hmm. quite literally. So uh, as many of you know, I'm also a yoga teacher, and so I'm very interested in what happens with the breath. And so it turns out that somebody else uh, at New York University by the name of Tyler Volk is also very interested in the breath, specifically what happens to our breath when we actually exhale. And when we exhale, of course, we release carbon atoms that used to be pieces of us. So it burns up in metabolism. Uh, we make use of uh, whatever uh, nutrients are available through the bloodstream, and then it just goes out with the exhale. So Tyler Volk decided to figure out how many carbon atoms go out with every breath out. And it turns out that number is a half a billion trillion. A half a billion trillion carbon atoms. That's five followed by 29 zeros. So those are half a billion trillion tiny little pieces of you that used to make up your body. And so where did those pieces of you come from initially? Well, they came from the food that you ate. And so where did that food come from? Well, ultimately came from plants, right? So we eat vegetables, we eat some root vegetables, we eat some leaves, uh, and those are carbon atoms that become our bodies. And so when we release those, we release those carbon atoms back into the atmosphere. And so Tyler Volk also decided to figure out, well, what happens to these things when we actually exhale? Like, where do I need to go? How far do I need to go to encounter one of those little pieces of me again? So it turns out that you can't go anywhere on Earth. So you pick any place that you want to, Antarctica, Africa, the North Pole, you name it. And everywhere that you go, if you take a meter sphere of air, so one yard, let's say, of sphere of air, about this big around you, every sphere of air around you this big contains 50 carbon atoms of each one of your exhales over the last year. 
50 carbon <coughs> atoms from each one of your exhales over the last year. So that's a lot of pieces of you that are in this air right now around us. You mean it spreads throughout the world? It spreads throughout the world. So what happens to those, of course, they get absorbed by trees and by plants. So there is, there is no blade of grass on the planet that does not contain thousands of little pieces of you. And so we are temporary concentrations of carbon atoms, and so are all these trees around us. And so we are having this dialogue continually with these trees around us. Okay, so I think that's pretty cool, and that brings that notion of interconnectedness, interpenetration really home for me, and it makes it very, very real. So if I think that I'm just a bunch of carbon atoms that are organized by some kind of intelligence and then energized some way, then and consciousness is a mystery. Nobody has figured out what consciousness is, and so who's to say that these little carbon atoms that used to be me still don't have a little bit of my consciousness in them? So when I send out well wishes that all beings be well and happy, you know, maybe a little bit of that actually goes out there. If I breathe out and I uh, hold that intention, maybe that goes out there. So, uh, of course, these carbon atoms eventually become trees, and the, the trees sometimes get cut down and get put to many purposes, like building this building or building this guitar. So if I look at this top, it came from a spruce tree from... Uh, this one comes from Germany, but I also use Sitka spruce, and those trees come from around this part of the world. Um, and these trees are generally about four or five hundred years old. And so they contain literally the atoms of all those people that lived up until that point, right? So this guitar, if I play Bach on this guitar, I would literally be playing Bach on this guitar. <laughs> so, um, so to bring that all back around, so this, uh, this is a song written by uh, somebody who's uh, sort of a friend of mine, I met him a couple times, his name is Scott Cook, uh, he lives in uh, Taiwan a lot of his life, and uh, he's originally from Edmonton in Canada, um, and uh, he's kind of a modern day uh, Pete Seeger, if you will, um, or, or a Woody Guthrie, kind of going around creating folk songs so that we remember. So he's, he sees his job as kind of being a scribe for this time and remembering what this time was like. And so he's written a song called Pass It Along, um, which uh, is very appropriate for someone like me to sing um, because it reminds us that this guitar came from a timber, uh, from the body of a tree, and so it's temporary. And so just like ourselves, we are temporary, this guitar is temporary, and it this guitar will outlive Hung Shur, and he's eventually going to pass it along to someone else, and then that person will pass it along to someone else, and every person will bring their own energy and consciousness into this instrument and create whatever music that they can from it and will express themselves through that instrument. So uh, I feel a big responsibility, even though I, I created this instrument, that once it's done, it's done. It's like it's out there. It's just like when I write a song, it's done. It doesn't belong to me anymore. And I, my job is to just keep it alive for as long as I can and then pass it along. So that's what this song is all about. So if you like, you can sing along with the chorus once you get the hang of the melody. Uh, it's a pretty catchy little tune. Yeah. 
here is my country Sometimes it's hard to recognize it But I count myself lucky To have been born inside it I'm grateful for the rights Of it struggled hard to win And you can be sure I'm gonna fight They try to take them back again The one everywhere are teachers Though some fell along the way The words they said still teach us Just like you're teaching me here today Speak it loud, but it's clear in what you do, and I hope to make you proud, cause I borrowed it from you. Pass it along, pass it along. May you land in careful hands when we're gone. Carry it for a moment, but time won't loan it to you for long. on discovery, making seeds that don't reproduce. If our vision is so narrow, seeing only bought and sold, we'll end up like the pharaohs, buried with their gold. We've all pushed this thing along, we've all been guided by our fear, but the river sings a song, we gotta be quieter to hear. It's in every child's face. New and hopeful as a stem, best be gentle with this place, cause we're borrowing it from them. Pass it along, pass it along, may it land in careful hands when we're gone. Carry it for a moment, the time won't loan it to you for long. wonder where did we go wrong to think that wealth is meant to be accumulated in the fewest possible hands and that the person who grabs the most wins you know that's such a defeating not a winning not a virtuous not a wholesome attitude but it's the one we've got Well, we have 25 minutes left for tonight, and I thought it might be interesting to go through and find out what we all did today. Let's make a list. Let's do a, a day at Buddha Root Farm. We'll save it here. A day at BRF. What did we do today? Just tell me and I'll type them. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Okay. A day. We have ten. At Buddha Root Farm. So, morning chanting ceremony. And what did that contain? What, what was what was it? Mantras. Shurangama mantras. Okay, what else? Chanting. <laughs> Chanting of what? We did that. Chanting of? 
Mer were you there? Oh, were you one? Oh, then. Merit. Of what? Merit. Were you there? <laughs> Chanting of medicine master thus come one. Buddha's name. Chanting in the Buddha's name. Come tomorrow. You can find out. Yeah, well, it's early. So, chanting of Buddha's names, chanting of ten vows, what else? Taking refuge, right? To the Buddha I return, right? Those are mantras. What else? Pra we do praises, praising the Buddha. Okay, so we're out of, what's up? Okay, bowing to the patriarchs. Okay. We didn't do that today, though. Every day. Heart Sutra? Is it Heart Sutra? I think uh, Omar mentioned there's Waco Bodhisattva there, too. Mm -hmm. He asked me about that. Praise to or praise of Waco Bodhisattva. Uh, we don't actually do Guan Yin in the morning. So, okay, that's morning chanting. My goodness, that's one hour. Look at that. We just heard, what do we hear? We heard, what was the, the last one? It had to do with Dharma doors, right? It said, as I wash my face with water, I think may all living beings have pure Dharma doors and be forever undefiled. These are, translate doors as methods. So these are all methods in one hour. We also circumambulate. Walk around, walk around the Buddha, it's chanting together. Okay, are we done with morning chanting? Then there is meditation. Amitabha brought that up. Okay, meditation, then what? Community service. Lecture. Community service. Community service. And that was a lot of different things, right? Including, including, hold on one second, food prep. So you do breakfast and then community work, right? Okay. You eat first. Someone needs to prepare the breakfast. Huh? Mm -hmm. Someone needs to prepare the breakfast. So. Early in the middle, that might be the same time. No. Breakfast, food prep, clean up. And is anybody chant for breakfast? No, just go ahead and take it. Okay. So, community service. Then, we, uh, Dharma lecture. Okay, and a su sutra lecture. Okay, let's call it a sutra lecture. Okay, sutra lecture, and there's a chance to ask questions, and, you know, this morning was really lively. Boy, 12 people spoke this morning about meditation. That was really good. What's that? I said about full lotus. Yeah, about full lotus. We really, woo. Yeah. So Q and A, which is a Dharma practice, letting your asking. Okay, what's the practice in Q and A? Not being afraid to show you don't know. Right, and uh, you know a lot of people like. Well, I'm supposed to know this. I'm an old cultivator, so I don't dare. Re you know. Or everybody's going to look at me and think you're stupid, so I won't say it. No. Did, did anybody, when they raised their hand, get like, laughed at? No. Only if it was a funny joke. If it was a funny joke. You did? I just raised my hand, everybody laughed at my name. Everybody laughed at your name. <laughs> you have a very special name, Amitabha. So, you, you probably don't know that in the Taiwanese Buddhist world, every opportunity during the day is a chance to go, Amitabha which is Chinese, Amitabha. So people recite your name all day long. How nice. You know. Amitabha. When you answer the telephone, Amitabha, Amitabha, hang up the telephone. You know. Yeah. Okay, what else? What else? We would hope that you were thinking about it <laughs> afterwards, thinking about what you heard, you know. So considering the Dharma. Songs. Songs, okay. Singing songs. Uh, then we process, process, precess, process. 
uh, in uh, in process down the hill. No, we have, uh, oh, oh, oh! Exercise. Exercise. Okay. Mindful movement. Mindful movement. Mm. <laughs> Photo check in. Yeah, photo transference. You hand it over. Okay, mindful movement. Three different kinds. Tai Chi, Kung Fu, Yoga. Okay, we recite mindful. We recite while we walk. So recite while pro uh, assessing down the hill. That's that's actually later, but it is. Group photo. Group photo. Is that what that means? Oh, no, that's what he wants no, no. to say. Is group photo. Oh, group photo. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Group I thought you were talking about giving Jerry your pictures. Okay. <laughs> no, but we have group photo before yeah. reciting down the. Street. Correct. We did. Before mind movement. Before mind. Before movement. So everybody's giving away. That's good. Okay, recite, and then we have. Lunch meal and lunch, offering. lunch, what's that? Meal offering. meal offering, that's right. We offer, boy, that's a complex moment when we share the food with spiritual beings. Who? There's recitation, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Then, look at all the various pieces that come together for one single meal, right? All the work from buying the food, bringing out the money to buy the food, and, and then selecting and then carefully, carefully preparing it, making sure there's no spoilage, wastage, you know, parasites or, or rodents coming in. All that stuff that is not easy. We take it for granted. We sit down, the monks sit down, food, you know, lunch, and there's huge amounts of work involved before the food is placed on the table. So, meal offering, then uh, mindful absorption of nutrients. Nutrition. <laughs> that sounds serious. You bet. We don't mess around. And then we have Dharma Then we have Dharma talk. Then we have a uh, community community service again. Meal closing. community service, then uh, from 2 o'clock there's uh, classes, multiple classes, multiple classes, your choice, um, including a uh, youth program, right? We walked over for our 2 o'clock group and there were the young people under a tree, under an apple tree. Uh, youth program, then there was, uh, let's see, then we went up to uh, discussion, oh, meditation, meditation. And then did, pe did you process up the hill? You did. Yeah. Okay. Hiking meditation. <laughs> okay, hiking meditation, there we go. No, but that's before the discussion. Up. Not down. This is it down? They're saying it goes before the discussion. Oh, discuss before the discussion. There we go. Wait, isn't that your 101? That, that, that was, so that's multiple, multiple classes. So multiple classes. Should we, like, you know, Dharma, is it Dharma 101? 101 is what it was called. What's that? Yeah, that's it. Dharma 101, volunteers, uh, round table, although it's not really round. And meditation is happening then. The youth, oh yeah, the youth program. And youth program. Right. That's a meditation. Yeah. Okay. Then there's discussion. No, then there's meditation. dinner. No, there's a, well, there's a half hour. There's a second meditation. Half hour. Then there's dinner. Then there is evening chanting. Then there is lecture. And then there is pass out in exhaustion. <laughs> Parents only. <laughs> Mindful. Mindful passing out. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and then there's a, there's a Dharma door called not talking after 10. Hey. Who, who knew? Yeah. Snoring alone. Yes. Yeah, snoring. Yeah, snoring. That's right. Snoring. 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 <laughs> snoring. <laughs> there we go. So, okay, check it out. I mean, that's a day at Buddha Root Farm. Look at this. Whoa. And it includes other things like t-shirt distribution. Right? T-shirt distribution. And I want Dhamma request. Dhamma request. We didn't do it today, but it's there. Okay. Somebody else is impromptu puppet show. Okay. Impromptu puppet show. Leo. I forgot um, to the Transferring the merit. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Before you pass out. Yeah. Thank you, Leo. Truck ride. The truck ride. Truck ride. That's not a dark. I guess it is. If you're the driver. Yeah. That would be. Um, uh, shuttle. Truck. Shuttle. Yeah, truck shuttle. Reaching the other shore. Is that when is the impromptu shuttle puppet show? Anytime. Anytime. This is yeah. Ongoing. Ongoing. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just to say, you know, there's a lot. Now there are things that we don't see, such as the 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 van trip into town. What? The van trip into town to buy buy supplies, and there's. Yes, Omar. Okay, how? Go ahead. He was in silence. We have translator Correct, I, absolutely right, absolutely yeah. right. Two languages. Yeah. Multiple language translation. Oops. Ongoing. Yeah, this is really a, that's a lot of work. If you've ever been a translator, you know how you have to put your mind into two, two functions, the listening function and the speaking function. Waking up? Yeah, that's, but you do that anyway, whether or not you're here. This is special stuff here, right? Waking up is, you know, you do that every day. Sleeping outdoors. Sleeping outdoors? That, that's, yeah, adapting. Okay, so we'll take it, actually. Sleeping outdoors. Where do we put that? At the end. At the end? Okay. After mindless snoring. After mindless snoring? Okay, so. Yeah. Sleeping in the bosom of nature. <laughs> yes. Um, so I think something something else happened last night. <coughs> that is that was remarkable for me in this part of the day. What would that be? <laughs> <laughs> I got permission. So, oh, it is about that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I did though. It's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's not too late. It hasn't said it. <laughs> Say it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Stop the suspense. <laughs> Don't miss the suspense. <laughs> to ten. Okay, what? <laughs> 
Okay, I can tell it because I Tent camping, which is a lot. That's, you know, we kind of take that for granted because that's, that's what you do. That's what we do. Um, but that's, you know, now speaking of which, this is, we got here Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. How are we doing with sleeping outdoors? Is it like okay now? It's not terrifying? What do you think? I see some patient looks over there. Like, not really. What do you think? Is it okay? Yeah? People who've, like, how about Miss New York City? Liz? This is my sixth time here. Your sixth time, that's right. That doesn't count. She's an old pro. That's right. To, go, to switch from Manhattan to, you know, to Oregon is quite a thing. Leo? You forgot looking at pictures. Looking at pictures. Yeah, I guess so. He's thinking. You put after, uh, Where? Under evening lecture? Evening lecture. Go down. Go down. Go down. Yeah, lecture. Okay, sure. then, uh, photos under okay. Under lecture. Lecture. Okay. Good. All right. So, just for reference, just so we kept track, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. And we, you know, we kind of go, what did you do at Buddha Root Farm? Nothing. There wasn't a swimming pool. I didn't see a frisbee. Is like walked a lot, you know. No, oh well, actually, no. There was a lot of things going on. It's just not a traditional camp where you go to distract yourself and be entertained. You know, who would like David Rounds said when people came to uh, our translation, and then they came back to our translation of Yavatomska. He said. Somebody said, why do, these, why do these students come? I mean, to the translation session? David said, maybe like the adults, they just like having fun with the Dharma. <laughs> maybe. Okay. My guitar has been retuned. We can transfer the merit and take advantage no, okay. of our practice with all these different ways of making bows and transferring, you can make your own. We can make our own. And the idea is, when do you make it? You know, when do you actually do it? Well, you do it kind of as the guitar is going. Like, that's the time to do it. We have, you know, people who've done a session Every time we do a session, we do what's called the Da Hui Shang, the Great Transference, right? We do a big one the first night, then we do that same big one the second night, and in, de in between, we do shorter ones based on that one. There are some parts that repeat. And when you actually do your transference, you're expected, if you're taking advantage of that method, is to just do it as you line up to bow. It can be done in two seconds, you know, may every living being quickly become Buddhas together. I dedicate my merit with the wish that my grandma stops fearing what's ahead of her. She loses her anxiety and, and you know, looks forward to the Pure Land, for example. You know, I transfer my merit with the wish that all those beings, the one every five seconds who is displaced from where they were born, refugees, lose their terror and find security and stability. You know, it's your, your wish. AIDS, AIDS did not go away. AIDS is still killing people left and right. And you could wish that AIDS go back to where it came from, which was empty space, you know, originally. AIDS came about in our lifetimes. And it's still there, you know. And we also have things like Ebola. And we have things like Zika, which kind of appeared and then it went away. And there's a funny one that's like, off the radar slightly, but you wonder about it, called mad cow disease. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What happened to mad, well, it's the meat and dairy industry control a huge part of our economy, and it's not good for the meat and dairy industry to discover that if you eat that food, <coughs> that nutrient, you get very sick and you die. So, who knows, who knows? During the George W. Bush administration, 
the meat inspectors. That's tax free, by the way. He's not in the office, so I don't have no five dollars. So. The, the, uh, during the George W. Bush administration, George owns cattle. His family does. His brothers do. They're the inspectors for the FDA who go out and check what the cows are eating and whether they're putting what are called downer cows right into the grinder, right? The people who do that inspection were cut by three quarters, right? One quarter of those jobs remained after George. So before, an inspector had to inspect, you know, a thousand cows a day. After those quiet, those bills that were quietly passed and the, the FDA was decimated, every inspector had 4,000 cows a day to inspect. And how many cows slipped by? Ooh, you know, you're not going to check 4,000 cows. So anyway, so just to say, we can transfer merit with the wish that toxins vanish from our food stream, from our food line. How come? How come? People tell us that we're supposed to eat the animal, the bodies of dead animals, to be healthy, when clearly it ain't so. Oh, and I want to make one more totally unrelated point. Have you realized you haven't checked your email for three days? Yes. What's that like? Happy. What's it like to not spend hours of every day with that device in front of you? Did you notice? It's really liberating, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. What do you fill it with? Turtle Mountain, you know, my goodness. So make that wish as you want to do it. May all 